In this video, I'm going to give you an honest review on living in Thailand as a digital nomad. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, my name is Sean and I've built and sold a seven figure Amazon KDP business and now I'm building my second KDP account. So if you're interested in making money online, digital nomad and sometimes personal finance topics, then make sure to subscribe. And if you wanna learn more about Amazon KDP, which is a very passive, fully online business that I do to make money online and travel the world like this, then there is a completely free training that you guys can check it out. The link is in the description below. All right, guys, so this is going to be my Thailand review after living there as a digital nomad for five months. I did a similar video like this uh, after I left Bali. I lived in Bali for 10 months and I did a review of that as well. After Bali, I went to Thailand and I lived there for five months in various locations. Uh, so I went to Chiang Mai to start, I went to Bangkok and then to Phuket and to Koh Samui. So I basically started at the mountainside, right, the north side went to the city and then to the south, you know, the island side. So I got pretty much the vibe for, you know, three different styles of Thailand. And now I left Thailand and I'm in Malaysia right now. So this is my official review of whether Thailand is good for digital nomading or not. And I'm also going to kind of compare, you know, Bali or Thailand, which is better. So first off, the criteria that I always look for uh, is convenience, cost of living, ease of visa, internet connection, things to do, healthcare, transportation, weather, people, and the quality of life. Now, I just want to do a quick disclaimer is that, you know, what I look for in terms of the criteria is different than if you're going to Thailand or anywhere else for a short-term vacation. Because for you, you're just trying to enjoy the vacation. For me, I'm actually trying to live there as a digital nomad, make money. So my criteria is like, you know, very different, right? It's like internet connection is super important because we actually gonna stay there long-term and work. Convenience is super important. How easy it is to communicate with people. Those kind of things uh, will be more important for me. So let's get started with uh, convenience first. I will give Thailand five out of five for convenience, uh, pretty much equal to Bali, if not even more convenient than Bali. Uh, basically because there's a, a app called Grab and there's Food Panda as well. There's different apps that you can pretty much order or hire out everything, right? So if you want food, you can just order it online and deliver it to you. I never cook meals myself because oftentimes it's cheaper and it's more convenient to have someone, you know, just deliver food for you. So laundry as well, you can just, you know, WhatsApp or line message them and then have them uh, pick up the laundry for you, do it and then deliver it back. So this is a picture of me, you know, you can just, it's so safe in Chiang Mai that you can just leave your stuff in the lobby of the condo that you're staying. Nobody will steal it. And then, you know, I'll just leave my laundry there. They'll take it and then they'll just leave it over there and uh, I pay them. So super convenient, uh, also cleaning too. So in terms of conveniency, absolute five out of five, I have no complaints. Cost of living as well. It's uh, actually a lot cheaper than Bali, uh, at least in you know Chiang Mai, Bangkok area. If you go to the island side like Phuket, it's probably like even, or maybe not so much. It's still cheaper in Thailand. But you know, in terms of cost of living overall, uh, five stars once again. Food is super cheap, two to three dollars per meal if you're going to like a small local restaurant. Uh, if you want healthy meals, like you know, for me, I'm in fitness, right? So I want something like uh, clean chicken breast, brown rice eggs, you know, healthy food like that. Or if you're more like, uh, if you want vegan food or if you want organic food, obviously it's gonna go up. It's like eight to $10 per meal, but you know, it's still cheaper in the US. The quality of food is amazing. There's a lot of varieties uh, wherever you were. Basically, I never had issues in terms of food, whether I was in Chiang Mai, Bangkok, Phuket, uh, Koh Samui. There was always a fitness food option for me. Now for the rental side of cost of living, I would also give this a five stars. And this is how much I paid uh, in terms of the four locations that I was in. Uh, basically, it was all one bedroom uh, condo or a studio uh, like this picture right here. This is a studio in Chiang Mai. And this is actually one of my favorite places because it was really good for YouTube recording. You know, the background was decent. The light was amazing. There was no echo. And it's really hard for me doing YouTube to find like this perfect recording setup because there's always like echo issue like this place. You know, it's nice, but there's a lot of audio echo, right? Sometimes the background isn't good. There's sometimes there's construction nearby. Uh, most of you guys won't have to, you know, 
like care for this, but for me it was amazing. It's like five hundred and fifty dollars a month uh, to have everything clean place, a very convenient location. Uh, so Chiang Mai is super cheap, and if you go to other locations, it's a little more, right? Bangkok I paid eleven hundred a month, Phuket I paid twelve hundred a month, and this is the thing about Phuket. The room was the worst out of all four of this. Uh, it was basically the smallest, super small studio. Uh, good location, you know, but nothing special in terms of the room. And it was the most expensive just because it was Phuket and just because it was like the island side, right? But Koh Samui was also the island side, but it's less touristy. And I paid $750 for this crazy place that I'm gonna show you, which is this. So Koh Samui rental was nuts. It was $750 a month for a one month uh, rental on Airbnb. And it's a literal lake house that you can see that I had my desk and I'm on the lake, facing the lake. It's crazy peaceful. There's no one making noises, right? And it's just like right in nature and surprisingly not much mosquitoes too. It did get a little hot, but like no complaints there. It was amazing. And the location was amazing. It was right in Chawang. I think that's how you say it. Area, uh, super chill. So anyways, Koh Samui was much better for me in terms of rental than Phuket. So ease of visa, uh, I will give this four stars. So not five, because it's a little confusing for me. And you know, basically if you do visa on arrival, you get 30 days and then you can go to immigration and extend this for another 30 days, right? So essentially you get two months and then you know, a lot of people will leave for a day or you know, you do a border run and then you come back and then you get another two months doing this. So a lot of people will keep doing this, but then you know, it's a little sketchy because if you do too much of that in a year, when you come back, they could deny entry, right? So preferably, you do more of a long-term option. Uh, long-term option would be something like an education visa. Education visa is you will you know, choose whether you want to volunteer, whether you want to learn Thai, whether you want to learn Muay Thai, and there's a time commitment. It's like, it depends on which one you want to do, but some are like 20 hours a week. So, you know, in exchange for 20 hours a week of perhaps learning Muay Thai or learning the language, you can stay for up to a year, uh, which is amazing because, you know, if you're into learning Muay Thai, if you're going to do that already, that's how you can stay right, and solve the visa issue. For me, though, as an entrepreneur, I do want to learn Muay Thai. I don't mind learning Thai. The thing is the 20 hours a week or however much time commitment, even if it was just eight hours a week, it's a lot, you know, if I'm trying to work, trying to be productive, uh, that is a lot of time that, I, you know, it's going away. So a lot of times it's much better to get a golden visa, which is something that you just pay and you can essentially stay for like five years. Uh, golden visa, I forgot the prices. I think it's like 5K a year or something like that. Um, but, you know, obviously it's so much cheaper to live in Thailand. So if you're coming from the US or Canada or wherever, then even if you're paying 5K for this visa, uh, and don't quote me on the price, but it's like around there, right? It's still going to save you some money just by living in Thailand. So um, for that reason, I'll give this a four star, but it's not the easiest for sure. The next one is internet and I'll give this five stars. It's significantly better than Bali. Uh, wherever you are, you know, you get data on your phone. You can just buy a SIM card and you get unlimited data as well as, you know, your condo mostly have a super fast Wi-Fi. So pretty much everywhere is fast. And if for any reason the condo or, you know, the cafe Wi-Fi is slow, you just hotspot it from your phone, which has the unlimited data plan, hopefully. And then, you know, you have no issues. So in terms of that, uh, Thailand is amazing. I think that's why a lot of people love Thailand as a digital nomad hotspot. Now, things to do. Uh, also five stars. Chiang Mai is a great blend of city and nature. I highly recommend everybody to check out Chiang Mai. Something about Chiang Mai really, you know, makes a lot of people fall in love uh, with the city. And same as me. I'm not a city guy. I love nature. And Chiang Mai also has more developed area, but it's just like a really, really nice mix of city and nature. Bangkok, obviously, if you love the city and the nightlife, it's a great place to be. A lot of my friends love Bangkok. For me personally, I didn't. it wasn't my style, but I can see that if you love the city, then it'll be great. Uh, Phuket, personally, it's more catered to tourists, and I this was my least favorite place. And Koh Samui is a slower pace. Uh, it's more of an island. So if you're looking for an island spot, you know, Koh Samui, for me personally, I really loved it. Uh, and it's much more of a slower pace. It's more for couples or, you know, family members compared to somewhere like Koh Phangan, which is where the, the full moon party is. I intentionally avoided Koh Phangan because I don't want to be 
in that party scene. I don't want to be surrounded by the party people because that's not the kind of people that I enjoy hanging out with, you know. So I intentionally went to Koh Samui and this slower pace in the nature, I really loved it. So these are some activities. Uh, this is in Chiang Mai. This is a white water rafting. You can see the elephants and you're just like kind of rafting next to them. So that was super cool. And then this is the night market. So, you know, there was some interesting food like eating scorpions and different bugs. But overall, the night markets, uh, there's a lot in Chiang Mai and it was really cool. And this is Bangkok. Uh, this is just a view from the restaurant and the high rise. So, you know, really, really beautiful, really, really developed area. And this is Rawai, Phuket. So I was in Rawai, which is like the least touristy area, I believe, in Phuket, but still like, you know, good digital nomad spot. There was some hype in terms of Rawai being like the next Changu. I don't think so. I don't think it's there yet, but the view was pretty nice. And finally, this is Koh Samui with some cool temples and a lot of nature and obviously nice beaches. So next is healthcare, and this is absolutely five stars. The healthcare in Thailand is amazing. Uh, once again, I'm comparing this to Bali because, you know, before this I was in Bali and it's significantly better than Bali. Um, especially in Chiang Mai and Bangkok, there's the Bangkok hospital and just the facility is amazing. It's top notch. Phuket is pretty good too. Uh, my friend got in an accident. Uh, so, you know, we went to the hospital over there and I can see that it's good. Koh Samui is a bit worse due to the island, you know, but still way better than Bali. Now the weather, it's four stars. So I gave a similar review to Bali uh, just because it's hot and humid, right? It's the same weather as Bali, but you know, five stars for me is like Medellin, Colombia or just Colombia in general when it's like, you know, eternal spring and it feels great. It's not muggy. And since it's hot and humid, I will give this four stars. Way better than the winter though, of course. But Chiang Mai during November and February was actually pretty chilly. We we're wearing long sleeve and, you know, at night when you're driving, it's freezing. So uh, I was surprised by that. Another thing is Chiang Mai, there is burning season uh, from around February to April, which makes it a lot of times unlivable, right? And, you know, this might be foreigners complaining because obviously locals live there, you know, and they do fine, but it, it gets really bad in terms of the burning season. And I doubt that it is something that you would want to live through. So a lot of times people kind of avoid this by, you know, moving to somewhere in the South uh, for this couple months and then they come back after around May or so. Uh, for the rest, uh, different areas like Bangkok or, you know, the island side, there is rainy season as well. So that's why I will give this four stars in terms of weather. All right, so transportation option, uh, five stars because there's always, you know, bike, uh, like motorbikes that you can rent. I love the motorbike lifestyle. So personally, I think this is way better than Bali just because Bali is so crowded. The roads are so narrow and it's so hard to drive, right? Compared to that, the roads are a lot bigger in Thailand. And so it's much easier to drive, much less of a traffic. There is still traffic, but it's not even close to how bad it is in Bali. Now, there is, I believe the accident is worse because the roads are bigger and also there's more highway here. So people are going faster. So when you do get in an accident compared to Bali, it's a lot worse, you know, in Thailand. The injuries are way worse and, you know, there's a lot more death because you're going much faster. But besides that, I think driving is better in Thailand. Uh, and also, if you don't drive a motorbike, you can just, you know, order Grab and taxi and just go everywhere. So that's very easy as well. All right, so next is people. So um, people, I will give Thailand five stars, except for Phuket. Phuket, I'll give them three stars. And here's why. Mostly Thai people are very nice, right? Very nice locals and expats. Except for me, uh, my experience with Phuket was not the case. Now, don't get mad because this is just my experience. And obviously, this is, you know, just generalizing the whole area. And that's not you know, it doesn't do justice to some people, right? Because no matter what race, no matter which area you go, there's always cool people and there's always bad people, right? Good people and bad people everywhere, you know? But in general, I felt a much worse vibe in Phuket. And here's why, you know, whenever the location is a lot more touristy, I noticed this happening uh, because, you know, if it's so touristy, so busy, people just get tired, right? So it just kind of shows in their you know, your, their uh, personality and their attitude too. Now, Phuket, uh, basically Bali too and Thailand, you know, er other areas as well. But especially Phuket, I felt like there was a Russian invasion happening. Like it seems like 90% of the population was Russian. And obviously I got some Russian friends, right? So there were some cool Russians and there are some not so cool Russians as well. But in general, in Phuket, I just felt like there was a lot more rude and confrontational people, which is not something you 
typically want anywhere but you know especially in southeast asia it's like known to have good vibes people are smiling and that is something that i noticed in phuket compared to other areas is a lot less friendly locals as well and i'm not quite sure why i feel like maybe because they're so tired of you know the tourists and maybe they're just like affected by that they're tired of it maybe the tourists are not that friendly so the locals see that and then they stop being friendly as well i don't know but basically compared to other locations a lot less people saying hi a lot less people smiling and just you know being friendly so that was just my experience uh but that's what i noticed all right going to the quality of life i give this five stars so i think it's absolute amazing value for money you also get excellent internet connection and work setup nice people in general and a health focused lifestyle so the final rating is I love Thailand and I will definitely go back. You know, I've met more digital nomads in Chiang Mai than anywhere else. This is a picture of a Amazon KDP meetup that we did. And we didn't even plan to go to Chiang Mai at the same time. We just happened to be in the same area. And the fact that there's over 10 people in the same business in the same area at the same time is, is crazy to me, you know? Because back then I was doing this in Hawaii alone and I didn't know anybody else doing this. Um, so there's a lot of digital nomads if you want to network and connect. Chiang Mai and also just Thailand in general is an amazing place. There's something for everyone, you know, whether you love the city, you can go to Bangkok. If you love the nature or the islands, you can go to the island side uh, like Koh Samui. And if you want a mix of both, then you can go to Chiang Mai. So personally, I don't recommend Phuket. I just never had a good experience, but some people do like Phuket. So if you want to check it out, you can go and check it out. But uh, personally, I would not recommend it. So where should you go in Thailand? Well, once again, Choose Chiang Mai for the incredible value for money. It's basically, if you're looking for value for money, it's significantly better than any other location in Thailand. And also the quality of life. It's so cheap and yet there's so many things to do. The weather is amazing. People is amazing. You know, the convenience is just top notch. There's literally everything. You got the city and the nature. So Chiang Mai, absolutely amazing. I would go back. If you want more of a city, uh, more nightlife, then you can choose Bangkok. And Koh Samui or other islands will be good if you do want the beach vibes. All right, a lot of people ask me the difference between Thailand and Bali. Uh, so this is what I noticed. And obviously, you know, Bali is just an island compared to Thailand as a whole country. So there's more options. But either way, this is typically how people compare the two. So that's what we're doing here. But Thailand has significantly better internet, way better infrastructure, better healthcare, personally better food a lot of people will agree that they have better food it's a lot more walkable which is important in bali it's so hard to walk over there because there's no sidewalks and most streets right uh thailand has more options for living in different areas once again you got the mountainside you got the the island side you have the city as well and on top of that it is cheaper bali on the other hand you know People is nicer, in my opinion. I noticed that people in Bali is more friendly than Thai people, but this is like slightly more. They're both very, very friendly. They're both very nice, uh, but I would give Bali a little more uh, in terms of, you know, nicer people. Another thing about Bali is the language is a lot easier to learn compared to Thai because Bali uses the alphabet compared to Thai. It just looks like squiggly lines, to be honest, right? But if you use the Google Translate app on your phone, it's actually very easy to communicate with people who don't speak English. It's actually very easy to read, you know, Thai uh, words because the Google Translate app will just translate it for you. So very easy to go around, actually. And Bali, for me personally, I think it's easier to stay long term because the visa option is a little better. All right, guys, so that is my detailed review on Thailand. I definitely would go back and hopefully that was helpful for you. I know that these kind of videos, not a lot of people watch it, but for those who do watch it, seem to like it. So I wanted to do another one in Thailand as well. So if you want to learn how I built a online business that allows me to travel the world, what I do is I actually built a Amazon KDP business. So it is a business on Amazon, but we're not selling physical products like Amazon FBA. We sell digital products. And for me personally, it is significantly better that way. It's way more passive and it's way less headache. So if you want to learn more about what I do then there is a free training the link is in the description below and that is it for the video so thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed it leave a like uh, comment if you have any questions subscribe if you haven't yet and i'll see you guys in the next one